Well, Justin Trudeau is getting ready to implement the time-tested and true socialist method of taxing a country into prosperity. In case it's not obvious, I'm being sarcastic. Viva Fry, former Montreal litigator turned current Florida rumbler, back in my home office for a vlog, catching up on the madness coming out of Canada. For those of you who don't know what's going on in Canada, Justin Trudeau just announced that he's going to tax more Canadians, more money. But don't worry, it's not going to apply to 99.87% of Canadians, as if that's a selling feature. But if you haven't seen the video, this is the video. We don't think it's fair that a teacher or electrician pays taxes on 100% of their income, while a multimillionaire pays taxes only on 50% of the passive income they make on capital gains. So we're going to make them pay a little more. I want to be crystal clear, though. This tax will not apply to anyone's primary residence, je tiens à être très clair, cette taxe ne s'appliquera pas à la résidence principale de qui que ce soit. And so 99.87% of Canadians will not pay a cent more tax. Those who will will be those who've benefited from an economy that seems tipped towards them and away from everyone else, particularly young people. Now, we're going to come back to the absurdity of all the things Justin Trudeau said in this video. But in order to understand the context, we need to go back to a tweet from Justin Trudeau the other day talking about his solution to the housing crisis in Canada. Let me read that tweet to you. Justin Trudeau at Justin Trudeau. If you think Canada's housing plan is ambitious, that's because it is. We're going to build almost 4 million new homes by 2031. We're going to change the way homes are built in Canada and we're going to create a new generation of homeowners. Let's get going. 1.33 p.m. 2024. For April 18. Don't worry, Canadians, Justin Trudeau here to the rescue. He will solve the housing crisis in Canada. And if you follow his policies, he will solve this problem by 2031. The only problem, this was his 2015 campaign promise. And I took to Twitter to remind him as much. Viva Fry at the Viva Fry. This was your 2015 campaign promise. You useless idiot at Justin Trudeau. And then a screen grab from the Liberal website of 2015, Trudeau promises affordable housing for Canadians. September 9, 2015. Now, someone in response to this tweet said, Viva, calling people names doesn't make you right. And I replied, no, I am right. And I'm still going to call him names. Viva Fry at the Viva Fry. You're right. Calling Trudeau a name doesn't make my argument stronger. It makes it catchier. There is a dual function to my tweets. One is to provide the information. The other is to provide the information in a way that maximizes its exposure. Respectfully submitted. Peace. Now, incidentally, I do actually mean respectfully submitted. Seriously, there. I'm not trying to put anybody on blast or make fun of someone. They have a point. Calling people names does not make you right. But when you're right, you can provide the evidence and then still call them a name. A, to remind them that they are a useful idiot. And B, to make the message a little catchier so that other people who might not have been aware of this information, get this information. And for right or for wrong, because I appreciate that some people might think it's for wrong, this is the tactic I am adopting on Twitter and I will not apologize for it. But now back to the subject at hand, that is Justin Trudeau taxing Canada into prosperity in order to complete this new ambitious housing plan, the one that he had not fulfilled from his campaign promises of 2015. Well, they plan to build 4 million new homes by 2031. They need money to do that. Where are they going to get the money to do that? Tax, 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 and tax. But don't worry, it doesn't apply to 99.8 7% of Canadians for now. In an article from Reuters, Canada's capital gains tax rise will further knock productivity, say economists, by Fergal Smith, April 18, 2024. Canada's plan to raise taxes on the savings of wealthy people and corporations is likely to hold back investment, potentially adding to the productivity malaise that has held back economic growth in recent years, say economists. In a bid to increase revenue to pay for housing and other programs, Canada's annual budget on Tuesday proposed increasing the share of capital gains that is subject to taxation to two thirds from one half for people with annual investment profits greater than $250,000 Canadian, as well as for companies and trusts. Now, this is a little complicated, so I'll do my best to explain it in as much as I understand it. Hashtag no financial advice. There is tax on capital gains in Canada. Capital gains being secondary properties, investment properties, stocks, things in which you invest your money passively, hope that it appreciates in value. And when you sell it, the difference between what you bought it for and what you sell it for qualifies as the capital gains. There was already a tax on the capital gains portion, but only on 50% of the capital gains. So hypothetically, you buy something for 100 bucks, it appreciates to 200 bucks, you have a $100 capital gain, you only got taxed on $50 
of that $100 capital gain, and that tax would be dependent on whatever bracket you fall into, depending on your aggregate income and or passive investment income. Okay, I hope that makes sense, and more importantly, I hope that's accurate. I'm pretty sure it is because I spoke with someone yesterday. Now they're proposing to tax you not on only 50% of the capital gains, but on 66% of the capital gains. So now if you bought something at 100 bucks, sold it at 200 bucks, you made a $100 capital gain, they're going to tax you on $66 of that capital gain. And the tax on that $66 would be whatever bracket you fit into, so it could be upwards of 45% at the maximum end from what I understand. And according to the Reuters article, it's only going to apply to people who make more than $250,000 a year from passive income for now. And it's only going to be limited at 66% for now. Holy crap, Apples. If anybody thinks that's where it's going to end, you haven't paid attention to what happened when it was at 50% of your capital gains. And bear in mind that this useless idiot Justin Trudeau promised this back in 2015. He failed to fulfill that campaign promise. And what does he do as a solution to his failure to fulfill his campaign promises? Tax Canadians more. And according to this Reuters article, and according to anybody with half a brain, this is going to hurt Canada, not help Canada. Back to the Reuters article, raising capital gains taxes could discourage savings, say economists, a key driver of business investment, which fell in the fourth quarter for the sixth time in the last seven quarters and has been unable to sustain a move above the 2014 peak. Are we noticing a trend there? The peak was in 2014, the Liberals come into power in 2015, and since then, what have we had in Canada? Pretty much nothing but devastation. Quote, the Canadian economy needs savings, and it's the relatively wealthy that now have less incentive to save, or more incentive to move those savings out of the country, end quote. Derek Holt, head of capital markets economics at Scotiabank said in a note, quote, less reward after tax is likely to discourage risk taking, discourage investment, discourage anything that might address Canada's productivity problems, end quote. Now with that backdrop explanation context, let's go back to that video of Justin Trudeau. I can't stand the sound of that man's voice. I know it's a bad feeling to have in my stomach, but I cannot stand the sound of that guy's voice. But let's go back to that video and break it down section by section. We don't think it's fair that a teacher or electrician pays taxes on 100% of their income, while a multimillionaire pays taxes only on 50% of the passive income they make on capital gains. Do you see the bait and switch that that scoundrel just did there? He went from comparing the teacher and the plumber who are taxed on 100% of their revenue to the billionaire who's only taxed 50% on their passive revenue. That's because the billionaire, in theory, is also taxed on 100% of their revenue, but they're also taxed on 50% of their passive revenue. And there might be a pretty damn good reason as to why, typically speaking, passive revenue from investments and the like are a little bit more risky than a salary. And so you want to incentivize people to take that risk, to invest in businesses, to invest in things that that generate that type of passive revenue, doesn't matter. But he bait and switched right before your very eyes, went from comparing the salary to the passive income, which are two very distinct things, because billionaires still get taxed on 100% of their income. There is just a carve out for passive income, which comes from investments and riskier things, to incentivize people to take those risks. So we're gonna make them pay a little more. So because we failed to fulfill our campaign promises from damn near a decade ago, we're gonna make them pay a little more. And look at the barking smooth brain seals behind them. Yeah, here, 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 here. Yeah. Their money take their money because we know how to spend it better than they do yeah that useless idiot justin trudeau's corrupt government is going to know how to spend your money more effectively than you know how to spend it wasn't this the same government that budgeted eighty thousand dollars for that arrive can app and the budget ballooned to 54 million dollars why yes yes it was the same government from the national post initial arrive can costs were eighty thousand dollars here's how it got to 54 million dollars but trust that corrupt and useless idiot Justin Trudeau to spend your money properly this time. Surely nothing of a similar debacle will ever happen again. That was an anomaly. Now give us your money, millionaires and billionaires, so we can not fulfill our campaign promise from 2015. I want to be crystal clear, though. I want to be crystal clear. What have I always said about anybody who starts a sentence with let me be clear or something similar? Viva Fry at the Viva Fry from October 7, 2020. Whenever anyone starts a tweet slash comment with, quote, make no mistake, end quote, or, quote, let me be clear, end quote, 90% of the time, what follows is absolute nonsense misinformation. Time tested and true. Now let's hear what that useless idiot corrupt Justin Trudeau has to say. I want to be crystal clear though. This tax will not apply to anyone's primary residence. Je tiens à être très clair. Cette taxe ne s'appliquera pas à la résidence principale de qui que ce soit. This tax will not apply to anybody's primary residence for now. 
If you think the tax, tax, tax method of socialist government ever ends, you haven't been paying attention. Oh, and by the way, you know what millionaires and billionaires are going to do to circumvent this tax on secondary residences or investment properties? They're going to sell their primary residence and not pay any capital gains tax and then convert their secondary residences into their primary residences and then they'll sell that without paying any capital gains tax. Holy crap, apples. And then what's Trudeau going to do? Tax, tax, tax more people. And so 99.87% of Canadians will not pay a cent more tax. And here Justin Trudeau says, don't worry, 99.87% of Canadians are not gonna pay a cent more in tax, thus highlighting effectively what is not a good economic figure for Canada. What Justin Trudeau seems to be implying here is that there are only 0.13% of all Canadians that make more than $250,000 in passive income. That's not a good thing. That is not the sign of a successful nation. That arguably is the sign of an impoverished nation because everything the Liberals have done over their near decade of power in Canada has impoverished everyday Canadians. This tax will not apply to anyone's primary residence. Je tiens à être très clair, cette taxe ne s'appliquera pas à la résidence principale de qui que ce soit. And so 99.87% of Canadians will not pay a cent more tax. Those who will will be those who've benefited from an economy that seems tipped towards them and away from everyone else, particularly young people. They've benefited from an economy that was tipped in their favor. I have no idea what the hell that even means. Some might say that they're the ones who have contributed to that aggregate economy, but one thing is for certain, what's gonna happen? People are gonna take their money and leave Canada, thus further impoverishing Canada as a nation. But don't take my word for it, because I'm just some lunatic yelling at a camera from his car. Let's hear what the experts have to say back to the Reuters article. Quote, increasing the cost of capital might appear to be good politics to some, but it is bad economic policy for all, end quote. Goldie Hyder, business counsel in Canada present, and C CEO said in a statement, quote, wealth redistribution is not wealth creation and the spending measures introduced today will saddle Canadians with debt without encouraging the strong and sustained economic growth they deserve, end quote. Oh yeah, and this is the same incompetent and corrupt government of that useless idiot Justin Trudeau that took a budget of $80,000 for a freaking app and ballooned it to $55 million. What could possibly go wrong? We'll follow up. We'll see where this goes. But if you like what I do, you know what to do. Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, drop a comment in the comment section below. Viva Fry on Rumble, the Viva Fry on Twitter. VivaBarnesLaw.locals.com for the best online community of above average members and most importantly, get out there, exercise, eat healthy, sunshine, talk to people in real life and now you know your vlog. Peace out peeps. Booyah! And Trudeau is an idiot. Obviously it's extremely upsetting that this happened. Uh, the speaker, speaker has uh, acknowledged his mistake uh, and has apologized. Uh, but this is something that is deeply embarrassing to the Parliament of Canada and by extension to all Canadians. I think particularly of Jewish MPs and all members of the Jewish community across the country who are uh, celebrating Yom, or commemorating Yom Kippur today. Uh, I think it's going to be really important that all of us push back against Russian propaganda, Russian disinformation, and continue our steadfast and unequivocal support for Ukraine uh, as uh, we did last week with announcing uh, further measures to stand with Ukraine in uh, Russia's illegal war against it. Obviously, 